Okay, so hello everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Janos Dani, and I'm currently working uh, at OSA as a help desk assistant. And besides that, I'm involved in the project of digitizing OSA's analog audiovisual material. So uh, my presentation title sounds fancy a bit and a bit mysterious, but basically it means that we were defined archival jobs, microservices, in an ordered manner and uh, used Airflow as a tool to help us execute them in an organized, supervised way. Uh, although I'm not an expert, but I would like to show uh, Airflow to this community. And after my brief introduction, my colleague Joseph Borne will show you how we use this tool in details. So as Juja previously mentioned, based on Dave Rice's recommendations, we were defined archiving processes and microservices. I'm sure most of you in the audience knows what microservices are, so I just want to highlight some core ideas behind the concept. So microservices are defined as an architectural style where your system or application builds as a structure of service collections. These services are loosely kept, coupled, independently deployable units. The consistency and the communication between components is done through transactions, and components could, uh, could be scaled separately and independently. So at the time, we were looking for a tool which can orchestrate or supervise our, su our services, and we were able to find quite a lot, quite a lot in the internet. There were all the well-known known ones like uh, Luigi by Spotify, but the main reason we were choosing Airflow besides other workflow management software is because Airflow uses workflow as a broader sense, has a good visual monitoring capability using a web UI, where you cut visual feedback from what is going on with your tasks, what are they doing, and in what state they are currently in. So Airflow is capable of sending alerts in a form of email notifications, could show useful charts, and we show some of them late, I will show some of them later, and uh, has a good documentation and community behind. So at the moment, they have 991 contributors. And at last, but not least, it's open source. So a little bit of Airflow's history. It started as an Airbnb in October 2014, written in Python, becoming an Apache incubator project in March 2016. And this year, it became a top-level software foundation project at Apache. This is the architecture of it. At the center, you can see the schedule, which includes an executor. I will go back, get back to this later, and the web server. The schedule is like an alarm clock. It schedules execution of tasks. The database stores information about the execution statuses and dates, and tasks and logs. The workers are basically nodes or machines. They are communicating with the schedule. The web UI is where you can control your operations, trigger workflows. You can see charts, reading logs, etc. So basically, uh, most of the operations you need to do, you can do uh, through the UI. A little bit of a, about the schedule. The, sh the schedule executes and triggers the task instances whose dependencies have been met on an array of workers, spins up a sub-process, which monitors and stays in sync with the folder for all workflow objects, and periodically, every minute or so, collects them and inspects active tasks to see whether they get, can be triggered or not, triggered or not. The schedule starts an instance of the executor specified in your Airflow configuration file. So an executor could be a local or sequential executor. This should be chosen when a task should be executed as a sub-process, or salary executor, or des desk or mesos, when tasks should be executed remotely. So now let me talk about the conceptual building blocks or core ideas as how Airflow calls them. Airflow uses dialected acyclic graphs, DAGs, to describe workflows. You can see a DAG evolving here. 
uh, they can be written in one Python file, and DEX can be run either on a defined schedule, hourly, on daily, or whatever, or an external event trigger. Uh, we're currently triggering, triggering our DAG with external mouse click event by hand. Joseph will tell you more about what it is about this later. So, and operator it is another conceptual bog, uh, building block. Operators provide that a single pipeline might contain bash, Python, or SQL operations. So basically, we can do anything what Python, Python could do, which is quite a lot. And with dependencies specified between them, I mean the operators, you can control or restrict the flow of your data processing. So if a task has cyclical dependency, it will never finish. That is why Airflow uses a concept called DAG for all workflow definitions. So DAGs define the logic of your workflow and the shape of your graph. A DAG isn't concerned what its constituent tasks do. So its job is to make sure that whatever they do, it happens at the right time or in the right order or with the right handling of any unexpected issues. So they can be played or paused, and they have starting dates. But every scheduled period between the starting date and, the, and now, the schedule will backfill past execution, so be careful. Uh, it runs as many times as it should have between these days. But if you don't want that behavior, you should set the catch-up parameter false. Operators are associated to DAX. So operators are only loaded if they are assigned to a DAG. They are loosely coupled functions, and Airflow provi provides operators for many common tasks for, tasks. for example, a bash operator allow allows you to run a bash command or a script. Uh, for calling a Python function, you can use a Python operator, and you can send email with an email operator, HTTP request with a simple HTTP operator, or executing an SQL command with MySQL operator, for example. And there is also a branch operator for branching to decide which path or way should uh, follow your execution flow. And operators are, uh, are subclasses of the base operator, so you can write your own as well. They are basically just Python class, uh, classes with an execute method. So uh, tasks, these are not building blo blocks, but tasks are in instant, instantiate, instantiated operators, and the, and the parameterized task become, became a node in a DAG. And each task has to finish its execution before its downstream task starts to running. But if they are independent, from each other, they can run in the, in the same time. That is how Airflow introduces parallelization. So in, uh, in the right side, you can see the assignment and dependencies and how dependencies can, can be defined between them. Uh, tasks, task in instances also have states, which could be running, success, failed, skipped, up for retry, uh, retry et cetera, and the task goes through various stages from start to completion. So uh, in Airflow's web UI, uh, graph and tree views have these stages are, and they are displayed by a color representing each stage. And more of the web UI. The web UI also provides useful charts, like for example, this Gantt chart. You can see how long a task was running, Let's uh, you analyze task, you, task duration and overlaps. And of course, you can view logs for inf information about tasks or events, and you can search for errors as well. So Airflow is so much more, <laughs> but I run out of time. So in this point, uh, I would like to thank you all for your attention. And let me pass the mic microphone to my colleague, Joseph Boni, who will show you more details about the uh, how we use Airflow during digital preservation. And there are some useful links that you can use. And thank you very much again.